Hi, everybody. Welcome to Consistently Creative Crew, our project recipe class. I'm Colleen. Along with my partners, Kari and Cheryl, we make up Consistently Creative Crew. And we're here tonight. I'll be teaching you the um, silver and gold project recipe. And um, the instructions are on our Facebook page that you can print out the project recipe. And if not, you can follow along with the verbal instructions. And then in the chat, Kari will be typing up um, the instructions in the chat. The first thing about this project is it requires a frame punch. So on my table, I have the five frame punches that I currently own, um, pedal, Baroque, uh, arches, geometric, and snowflake. And how you can easily tell it's a frame punch is it has a silver line on the side. Um, it has a gap in the um, in the design on either of the wings, and that's to show you. I'm trying to get the light right. That's to show you where you line it up to do a frame punch. So that's the the that's the tool that you will need. That's of most importance to create this, because as you can see from the project recipe, we use it on a piece of a whole sheet of paper on this side, and then we punch three uh, four by four squares to create this design. Now I'm gonna be using the snowflake. So I already did one, but this is what my snowflake punch is gonna look like. This is a four by four square paper, and that's what it's gonna end up looking like. The papers that you need and I'm going to try and relate it to the um, sketch here. The papers that you need is two background papers that tone on tone. I know I'm very much matchy matchy with my background, so I'm going out on a limb here. I'm doing these two as my background. I happen to be using the Winter Woods collection, which is uh, a previous year's um, winter. And then you need one tone on tone paper that you like both sides because this is what you're going to punch one side of and fold over. That's this big piece on this side. So you're going to want good contrast between your base and contract, contrast between the front and the back. And the other two papers are very simple. They're just cardstock. And they both serve as the mats. Um, they serve as the mats. The photos on the right are double matted. There's this platinum silver and then um, a black cardstock. And then the other mats, the silver are mats on this side. Paper number two is what you're going to punch. That becomes these here and the mats under here. And it, I think it really should be a cardstock, but obviously you can go out, you can do whatever you want to. I haven't practiced using a designer paper for um, a lighter weight paper for punching. And it could turn out perfectly fine. Well, obviously it does turn out perfectly fine because we do it over here. So don't listen, never mind that comment. So it's again, I'm going to say two pieces of paper for the base. And they are they show the example shows two different tonal papers. So I did what they did. I did two different tonal papers. And then paper number one is what's on the right hand side. That's the one you're going to fold over and you um, you will see both sides of it. And then two pieces of cardstock to do your mats. So it's really not um, all that complicated as far as um, supplies for paper. So I am going to do winter photos because I was excited about my snowflake punch, frame punch. So that's what I'm going to be using.
And the, um, the cutting guide, hopefully you were able to access it. If not, we'll just give you all the instructions. Starts, uh, and we're just gonna start with paper number two, your cardstock. We're gonna cut that first, just because of tools. Is everybody good to go before we get started? I can't see. Let's see. Let me change my view. Okay. Um, so paper number two is we're going to cut at four inches. And on the project recipes, the first number is always the um, the first cut four inches and then we're going to rotate it and cut it at four inches two more times and these are the pieces that we're going to um, punch so I'm going to set those aside next to my punch then the next cut is at six and a half And this small strip is a scrap, we can set that aside. And then we're gonna rotate it and cut it at four and a half. And then this piece is also scrap. So this is going to be our mats for the right hand side of our layout. And then paper number three, also cardstock. We're going to cut at four. And then rotate and cut at six. And those will be the mats that will go right on top of the other ones we just cut. Hang on one second. You said four and then cut it six, right? Yes. Four, turn it sideways and cut it six. And the next set of mats, we're going to cut at three and a half. Oh, I did not cut through all the way. I just changed my mat strip today. There we go. And rotate and cut at five. I got a little Cheryl in me today. I'm going fast. Mm. Usually not that speedy. All right, then the next strip again is three and a half. Don't worry, I'll slow down when it's time to put it together. And then rotate it and cut at five. Twice. And then what you have left is scrap. So now we're going to go back to paper number one. This is your two-sided paper that we're eventually going to punch. And that you cut two one-inch strips to start with. So because it's less than two inches, I'm gonna put it to the right of my cutting guide, my trimmer, blade, cut it one inch twice. And then we're going to rotate and cut it at 10. And the remainder is scrap. You can set aside. That is it for our trimmer.
And now you need your punch. So let me show you, I practiced, so I knew what I was talking about. This is my 10 inch square piece of paper and we only punch it four times on two sides. And you can see there's a remainder a corner here and a corner here. Then they tell you to score it, but you can also just fold it in half. And then that's how you're going to show the design. Obviously, this is not a great paper to use because it's lined, it's not good contrast, but it was just a good sample. I wanted to show you what we're doing. And we'll cut off these wings. So it doesn't matter what side of the paper you punch on because you can just flip it over. You can decide when you fold it which way you want it to go. And what they instruct you to do is start with the right Oh, I'm going to read it. I just did it again, but I want to, I'm going to read it. Okay, so you want to punch two adjacent sides. And they want you to start with the right hand side. Okay, take the right hand side of your paper, align it with the right hand side of the line, the break on the frame punch. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. Take it up closer. I don't know if it'll focus better. If I can get the light to go there. Yeah. And you're going to punch. Make sure to hold tight up against the guide on the left hand side. All right. Then slide it over and line up design and punch it three more times. Continuing to hold on the left hand side and lining it up with the design. Okay, can you remove your punch poop? You might want to hang on to your punch poop because it might be kind of nice. Then I rotated the paper and did the exact same thing again. Line up. So I punched one edge from right to left, rotate, insert the paper, line up the edge right at the break, the silver line again, and punch four times. Okay, move your punch poop out of the way. And then you end up with this, your shape. And now you can fold it over whichever way you want. You can also put it Put in your scoring blade and do it in your trimmer. I'm just using my finger now. Just folding it from edge to edge where the punch is. And if I wanted to, I could have folded it the other way to get a different look that way. I'll have to decide when I put it on my paper, which way I like better. Does anybody have any questions about how to do the frame punch on the 10 by 10 inch square? So we only punch two sides, correct? You only punch two sides and you only punch four times on each of those two sides. 
And now, uh, is does everybody have their frame punched? Yes. All right, then we'll go to take out your four inch squares from your cardstock. You should have three of them. And we're going to punch These, these are the four inch squares out of cardstock. You have three of them. You take the punch and you just line it up in the center. And with the four inch measurement, it lines up on either side, right up to the silver lines. So you're just centering it on the punch and it matches up with the lines. Punch, rotate, match up the lines. On either side, there's no design matching on this. It's just the edges of the paper. Punch, rotate, and you do that on all three of these four by four squares. And then there's my first snowflake. And you get these cute little squares. You might want to save them for embellishing. I'm going to save all my snowflake poop, punch poop, because it might turn out to be an embellishment. What punches, what frame punches is everybody using? Uh, I think, I think my the Baroque. I'm using the cobwebs. Oh, nice. Well, that's yeah. got Baroque. You're using Baroque? Yes. I'm using, um, I'm doing Halloween. Oh, nice. Good. I'm using our the new one. The um, only problem I have is I did the black and gold kind of combo, like the directions. And all my Halloween embellishments are black. So I got black on black. Oh, okay. I know, right? No, that didn't work out. I never would have thought using a whole piece of paper and you know, folding it in half and only punching two sides. It's just not really cool. So I appreciate how the uh, project recipes give us all kinds of different ideas. That's a good. And that's really nice if you like both sides and you really want to show both sides. So that's nice with those double dips that you're going, oh no. Yeah, I get bummed when I have to cover up the side of a piece of paper. <laughs> yeah. How about we take a pause? In the recording. Back up. Okay, so the first assembly is the one strips go on the left hand side, and you can face them out with your photo mats. And I'm just going to lay it all down so we can get the look of how how it goes together. And then you take your um, no your uh, punched pieces and they go down the left hand side. The three pieces you punch, the four inch squares you punch. I need to slide over a little bit more. I 
where I want my snowflakes to go. And your two largest, well, your two mats layer on top of each other. Inside. Punched. So you can see on my layout on my page, it's coming coming out over the images, which is what the example sample. Should. They also have the photos on the right and the left at the same height. And then the ones in the middle come down a little bit more. So they're offset. So these are the same, the left and right photo mats are at the same height. And can you, I don't think you can see the whole right hand side of my paper, I can't tell, especially not because my hand is there. You can um, see it, you're good. The, uh, you know, we have these little wings that are coming off the side. So you can use your scissors or you can put it in your trimmer and just, Trim off the wings. I'm going to use my scissor. Now they're still going to hang off some, but I'm going to put it down and then. Um, flip it over and trim off whatever is hanging off. So you reuse repo on the inside of your. Do I decide? Wait, I'm deciding. I'm having a. I want to decide what side I want to show. Let me look at this one. I'm going to go with this one. Okay. So put repo on your punch side. Fold it together. And now I'm gonna put my mats together. And put them in place. And then I think I will pick up my big punch piece and put that down. And I'm going to use repo just to give myself the flexibility of moving it around. And I just ran out of repo. <laughs> and then we're just going to assemble our page together. So by the magic of video, um, the uh, layout is complete. Uh, the I've added my photos, double, these are the double mats over here, added a laser embellishment and took a scrap to put my, to anchor my um, embellishment cluster, added a, a border, sticker border and um, stickers. And I'm just going to uh, journal right on the paper because it's, it's easy enough to do that. I wanted to show you um, how this is hanging over the edge and I've already trimmed one of them. I'm just going to turn it over and use my scissors. I don't want to try and put this in my trimmer with all my photos on it and everything already. Yep. Just turn it over, trim it. And there you go. And the only thing missing is journaling, uh, which I will do. Uh, and please post a photo on consistently creative croppers if you complete this layout. And I believe, is there anyone else that'd like to show their layout?
Um, I'm not quite done, but I have my basics done. If you want to share my screen. Oh, nice. I use, yeah, I use the silver and gold. I haven't like put pictures down. I'm trying to pick my pictures and whatnot, but I use the actual um, one that the company did. That looks great. I like how that turned out. Very nice. Okay, I can show mine. All right. Oh, oh pretty came out too. The Baroque one came out really cute on those four inch ones, I, huh? Yeah, I really like how those they came out with those. Like a flower. The four sides. Yeah. Yeah. I like your background paper too. I think yeah. it just pulls the whole layout together. Thanks. Thanks. It was the last two sheets I had from that Let the Good Times Roll. And oh. the back of it is this. There you go. So I was like, it was good. Perfect. This was a great layout, Colleen. I think this was really versatile in showing how to use all that. Thank you to you for picking that. Sure. Thank you. And thanks for joining us tonight, everyone. And have a good evening. You too. Bye. Bye. Thanks.